What happens in damage tolerance? We know it was all aircraft fly. We're going to generate fatigue cracks in fatigue critical holes. How can cold expansion improve the damage tolerance? Uh, that is, the life with a pre-existing crack. And most of the airworthiness authorities these days, and also the military, require you to do an analysis, assuming there's a rogue floor, even in manufacturing, that someone may have put a defect in the floor, there may be an inclusion in the material. So you assume there's a rogue floor, and that's typically in the order of about 50 thousandths of an inch. So you have to assume that's there, and you do your residual life analysis, based on that residual crack that's present. To stop those cracks growing, again, we can increase the thickness. We can put a doubler on there, but that ad adds weight to the structure. It changes the stiffness and dynamic response of the structure. But again, if we now cold work that existing structure, put that residual compressive stress, even if you have a small pre-existing crack in the hole, that residual compressive stress will keep the crack closed and in most cases prevent further growth of that crack as long as the stress levels don't exceed that, uh, the loads are going to open the crack. Part of the reason it does that is that we have, remember we said there's a stress concentration, a factor of about three times the stress just by drilling the hole. Now if you have a crack in a hole, we have another multiplying effect on the stress, and that's called the stress intensity factor. And typically that stress intensity factor, as a crack grows from a hole, will typically increase and then continue to, to go until you get to the critical crack length which will cause the crack to actually fail the structure. If we cold expand the hole, that clamping effect of closing the crack up will greatly reduce that stress intensity factor. And by plotting the analytical results, we can see we greatly reduce the stress intensity factor for a crack that's growing through a hole. A lot of people think that when you go through that residual compressive stress zone, that the residual compressive stress is just acting like a big spring that's keeping it all compressed and as you cut through it the whole thing would collapse. That doesn't occur because you've actually physically yielded that material. It's like that spring I showed you. We have a permanent set and permanently enlarge that hole. So even though the crack may continue to grow beyond that residual compressive stress zone, the clamping effect still keeps the crack closed. And in fact we can increase the critical crack length considerably because of that crack closure effect. So the combination now of the residual compressive stress will lower the stress intensity factor and slow down the rate of crack propagation through that residual compressive stress zone. That means we greatly extend the fatigue life. When you look at the United States military uh, requirement for damage tolerance, where you assume there's a 50 thousandths floor, we plot out the, the crack growth from different initial crack sizes left in the hole uh, versus the number of cycles it takes to, for that crack to grow to a critical crack length. And you plot that out, so typically you assume there's a 50 thousandths floor, and in this case here, this coupon that we would have tested would have only had a life of about 17,000 cycles. Now if we cold expand the hole, and rather than doing all the analysis to, to show what the residual compressive stress is and working out the reduction in stress intensity factor, that can be very labor intensive, what they can do is assume if you cold work the hole, you now can have a smaller initial floor size and then work out your residual crack growth life from that. But again, that life would have only been from a 5,000 crack about 40,000 cycles. It's a very conservative approach to taking the benefit from cold expansion in repair and damage tolerance analysis. If we physically plot a cold expanded coupon, uh, you'll find that, in fact, the life from a 5,000th crack, if, we, in fact, we can get it to fail, uh, would have been in the order of about 670,000 cycles. So it is a very conservative approach, but it's something, a very quick analysis by giving a life improvement factor. If we look at what the effect of that is for the operator, as far as his reinspection intervals, or even in new construction, when would you need to inspect the aircraft to make sure you've picked up any crack before it gets critical, you'll typically plot the life from a pre-existing crack up to what we call the critical crack size. Then you'll divide that interval back into three, so you have at least two inspections to try and find that crack before the crack gets to the point where it could fail the structure. So you have at least three inspections. Now if you plot a cold expanded coupon and you go to the critical crack length, this is a log scale, so it's a factor of 10 each time. If I really plotted that on a normal scale, this point would be way outside the room. 
So we greatly improve the fatigue life. So when you plot the critical crack length and divide the intervals for reinspection, you'll often find that the first inspection would be way beyond the original economic life. And that's why we term many times that once you cold expand the hole to prevent the growth of small cracks, it'll be terminating repair. There'll be fur no further inspections required during the current economic life of that structure. Some of the other engineering considerations we have that uh, obviously there's a lot of engineering involved in, in designing a repair uh, to ensure we account for all the variables that could come into play. The first thing like edge margin, how close to an edge can that hole be? If you typically will have an edge margin at least two times the diameter from the edge of the structure to where the centre of the hole is. But at, if you have to enlarge that hole, or sometimes you might misdrill the hole, you might get very close to the edge. And designers don't like going too close to an edge because you have static strength problems. And in fatigue, the probability of that causing a crack increases considerably. So if we look at what the effect would be uh, for a close proximity hole uh, in edge margin, the typical what we call edge margin is the ratio of the distance from the edge of the hole uh, divided by the center of the, uh, the diameter of the hole. That's an E over D. So cold expansion can improve the residual life in a short edge margin condition. We still apply the same level of applied expansion. We still need that zone of residual compressive stress. Uh, and if you have a shorter edge distance, by putting an interference fit fastener in that hole as well, can further enhance the ability of that structure to carry load and not get a fatigue crack at a short edge distance hole. We've done some testing down as low as about a 0.75. Now remember I said the original E over D is 2. That's 2 times the diameter. So an E over D of 0.75 is a very short edge distance. Cold expanded and compare that to a normal coupon of an edge distance of 2 with no cold expansion, the life was better than the original coupon. So cold expansion in a short edge distance condition can help you accommodate the uh, effect of that short edge distance under cyclic load. The hole, unless there's a high stress concentration may be associated with that design that's going to cause a crack to grow or initiate in the first place. A poor design, cold working is not going to help you with that. Cracks don't really accelerate when we get to that tension field. Remember I said that crack closure, we're keeping the crack closed, so the cracks don't accelerate when it gets beyond that residual compressive stress zone. Cold expansion doesn't exacerbate stress corrosion cracking, particularly on a short edge distance. Some people are concerned that that may cause stress corrosion cracking. There's been no evidence to show that cold expansion makes it any worse than an interference with fastener. Cold expansion, like I said, can frequently provide you some sort of terminating repair action with no further inspections required of the structure. Okay. So just in summary, fatigue technology, we've been in business for over 40 years. Uh, we actually were involved in the invention of the system of the, the split sleeve for the cold expansion process and we've come up all the, the derivative processes since then to help in aircraft design and manufacture. The attributes for cold expansion just very quickly increases the fatigue life without changing the stiffness or dynamics, doesn't make a thicker structure, improves the fatigue life considerably. It extends the inspection cycle, it pro provides that terminating repair action, definitely improves the damage tolerance, particularly in repairs where you may have an existing crack that's been missed. By cold expanding it, you're going to prevent that crack from continuing to grow. We can reduce the structural weight of the, stru of the structure by operating at higher stress levels, we can do it in both new production or repairs, and it's a one-sided process up to about three inches diameter. Thank you very much.